Here, we see a gamer in his natural habitat. How long has he been here? How long will he continue to be here? We'll never know. Studies into the behaviour of the gamer are sadly few, so we currently have only assumptions and guesses as to the innermost workings of this amazing creature. What are its natural, instinctive motivations? How does it communicate? How does it engage with other members of its own species? We'll stay watching in order to get as many clues as we can about this fascinating natural wonder. Humans were gamers long before the advent of digital games. As Moselius and others say, quote, Hardcore gaming is not a new phenomenon, and there have for centuries been gamers preferring long sessions of bridge, chess and mahjong over work and life commitments. One main difference between gamers of then and now is their earlier introduction and submersion into digital gaming behaviour. So much so that these days, a non-gaming child is more of an anomaly. The term gamification was originally coined to describe the use of gamified marketing techniques aimed at driving sales through more meaningful engagement with consumers, but it wasn't long before it was being used to achieve engagement in other areas as well, and we're looking at one of those here, education. Supposed crisis of engagement, saying that we're generally less engaged and less motivated to be engaged, is a theory that has achieved prominence in recent years, and it's specifically applied often in the educational space. As Parsons and Taylor state, to truly realise a student's potential, they need to be fully engaged in their learning. So what drives the love of gaming, and which game elements specifically make them attractive to a gamer? CXs and others say that the appeal is simply the combination of the fantasy element, the challenge that a game represents, and the sense of wonder, curiosity and discovery. With this said, aiming to apply these feelings into an educational context makes a lot of sense. As Kim explains, gamification presents a way for teachers to quote, chase the fun part of game playing while providing an opportunity to motivate and engage students in a learning activity. Critical consideration needs to be given to how we do this though, to ensure that gamification doesn't, as Johannes says, obscure the main function, which is to deliver learning. Advocates for gamification point to lots of perceived benefits. Nolan and McBride talk about the fact that game-based learning in early childhood allows children a voice to direct their own education and this autonomy is seen as beneficial and encourages the recommended play-based learning. Other studies claim that gamification promotes higher levels of collaboration, problem solving and communication. Wang and others conclude that it's the quote, immersive features of gamification that leads to better engagement, which CXS and others say is a good thing because many students fail to organically develop the necessary levels of engagement needed to reach their full learning potential independently. Receiving fast feedback about progress, instant acknowledgement, increased concentration and enjoyment in the subject matter are all other key points in favour. From a cost perspective, adding game-based elements to a lesson is a cheap and easy way for a teacher to motivate. Adding a leaderboard to track points for achievement could be done, but there is mixed opinion about whether this actually encourages long-term learning and the addition of gamified elements needs to appeal in order to be effective. Today's student falls into the category of digital gaming native, a person who developed digital gaming habits and experience from early childhood. So, those that gamification is hoping to influence are well versed in gaming behaviour already. How would gamified learning be attractive to them? Well, Chi and Wong argue that it won't, as in most cases, the design of gamified elements are simplified for ease of adoption, often overused, neglect the behavioural complexities that make games appealing, and in general are losing their novelty and effectiveness. 
Could gamification interfere with the natural relationship students have with their learning? What negatives could come from a generation of learners who require constant acknowledgement of the very basic of achievements? As discussed by the CXs and others, students who have been engaged in gamification previously generally wanted higher levels of recognition for completed tasks. Chi and Wong describe this as the over-justification effect and argue that the very fact that intrinsic rewards are being given to students to stimulate their learning should be criticised, as just completing a task is not enough to qualify as learning. There is a difference between achieving surface learning, a superficial understanding of a topic, and deeper learning, where critical structure and principles of an idea are understood. Anecdotal evidence shows students generally find gamification fun, but we need further study into whether students who say they engage well continue to be engaged when the game ends. Industry estimates are that 80% of digital games will fail in the market due mostly to bad design. So this is something that educators should keep in mind when deciding how to incorporate gamification into their lessons. Everyone responds differently to different learning environments, so gamification by any definition will never provide us with an educational quick fix. But it has provided us with some new and innovative tools to consider, as well as an opportunity to critically look at this industry within a progressive context.